United States just revealed its formidable next-generation fighter jet. This air fighter is not just better than the F-22 Raptor, it is designed with features that makes it the best in the game. No other fighter even comes close. With a mind-blowing cost of $4 billion, the United States has taken over the control of the skies and maintained its position as a nation at the forefront of technological advancement. What features does this next-generation fighter possess? What effect would this technology have on modern warfare? Join us as we delve into the futuristic design of the U.S. 4 billion sixth generation fighter jet that Russia is terrified of. After what went down between the United States F-22 and China's J-22 Dragon, which was unveiled in 2017, the U.S. has embarked on an expensive journey to develop a next generation fighter jet. This nation has been actively working on one of the military's most ambitious aviation programs, the Next Generation Air Dominance, also known as the NGAD. This program began in 2013, shortly after the United States revealed its very first stealth fighter jet, F-22. In making sure that this fighter is perfect, officials from the U.S. Air Force joined DARPA research in 2016 and introduced the Air Superiority 2030 plan. They discussed the need for a bunch of different systems, but the most important part was the fighter, called the PCA, or Penetrating Counter A. When the planning phase of the American sixth generation fighter began, DARPA thought about having experts from both the US Air Force and Navy work together. But later on, they were told that each military branch should make their own fighters. Some believe that DARPA did this to create a friendly competition between the Air Force and Navy and get two really good new planes instead of just one. So the Air Force started making the NGAD and the Navy started their own FXX program. Later on in 2013, Arati Prakar, the director of DAPRA, mentioned that the U.S. started looking into a plan for air superiority, which hinted at the development of an air fighter with capabilities that the world has never witnessed. Aviation enthusiasts all over the world believe that this new aircraft would have really strong engines, top-notch sensors, smart technology all over the cockpit, and even some drones helping out. Since Northrop Grumman backed out of making NGAD in 2028, Boeing and Lockheed Martin seem to be the main contenders now. They are competing for a big contract to build 200 of the newest fighters, so it's a big deal. Also, Assistant Secretary of the Air Force Will Roper mentioned that they already started making a full-size prototype of the NGAD fighter back in 2020. Many other companies are helping out by working on things like self-driving tech, sensors, and other systems needed for this next-generation fighter jet, as well as command and control features. They are planning to have a design for these planes ready to be made by 2028. However, they are not starting from scratch with these aircrafts. Some other programs with similar goals are already being developed, and they include DARPA's Air Combat Evolution, Boeing Australia's MQ-28, a ghost bat project, and the Air Force Research Laboratory Skyborg program. These are just a few examples. These programs are all about developing ways for manned and unmanned planes to work together. It is also common knowledge that when it comes to investing in its military sector, the United States is the leader. Already more than $4 billion has been spent on the NGAD program, and more money is going into it for further development. However, this is just a dime compared to what the United States has budgeted for the development of this air fighter. It had been disclosed that the Pentagon plans to spend $850 billion in the 2025 fiscal year, and the chunk of this, about $815 million, would be used in the development of the Air Force's NAD fighter alone, which is a lot more than last year's request for $276 million. The Air Force seems to favor the Skyborg program, and has budgeted $5 million in 2024 to transition its autonomous flight tech to the CCA programs. So there is already some progress being made with these unmanned planes. The Secretary of the United States Air Force, Frank Kendall, says each new futuristic fighter will cost multiple hundreds of millions. But for now, let us focus on what this plane might be like in the future and put money worries aside. When this fighter is ready, it would undeniably become the most expensive one ever developed, beating even the F-22 Raptor, which is currently the most expensive air fighter that has been developed. That is why the Air Force's total request for the NAD program has gone up from about $1.9 billion 
to almost $2.76 billion. The Pentagon plans to spend a billion dollars on the program over the next five years and at least $40 billion in total. The only problem with the Raptor is that it is super expensive, costing over $350 million each. So the top priority for NGAD experts is to make sure the new sixth-generation planes have the best technology to offer without costing too much like the F-22 Raptor. Despite the fact that the United States Air Force is working on many programs for superfast missiles, having stealthy aircrafts that are hard to detect by radar is still really important. It's tricky to make the new sixth generation planes even stealthier, especially since the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II are already really hard to spot on enemy radars. Also, modern fighter engines work best at one particular point during flight. The next generation of fighters will have engines that can adjust to different modes, ensuring they work most efficiently at any speed or altitude. This means they can fly farther, accelerate quicker, and use less fuel when cruising at lower speeds. The engines will act like turbojets when flying fast, but switch to turbofan mode for slower travel. General Electric and Pratt & Whitney are developing these engines as part of the Adaptive Engine Transition Program for the U.S. Air Force. They plan to use them not only in new fighter jets, but also in existing ones like the F-35. The F-22, renowned for its ability to fly at supersonic speeds without afterburners, still consumes a huge amount of fuel during this supercruise. If the supercruise could last longer without burning too much fuel, it would speed up travel time for missions. This presents a challenge for the team working on the next generation air dominance program. Also, the Raptor has a modern cockpit with digital flight instruments. It has a big screen in front that shows important flight information and six smaller screens with colors. The pilot controls the plane using a special joystick and throttles. The canopy and the glass covering the cockpit is big and heavy. It had to be redesigned because it did not last as long as it should have. It also has built-in radio systems, and its control panel has a keypad for pilots to type in messages and commands. There are small screens near the control panel that show extra information and act as backups if needed. The main screen is used for navigation, and there are three smaller screens for tactical information. The seat the pilot sits in can eject them in emergencies, and it has special features to keep the pilot safe, like an oxygen system and protective clothing. After some problems with pilots not getting enough oxygen, the system was improved with a backup oxygen supply and a new valve in the pilot's vest. In dangerous situations, the ejection seat even comes with a small gun. Since the NGAD would be a better but more affordable next-generation fighter, its cockpit would have more advanced features than that of the F-22. The new fighter will look quite different from what we're used to seeing in terms of designs. The NGAD will likely have a sleek design with a long mixed fuselage and wings that would not have the usual horizontal and vertical stabilizers. This unique shape is aimed at making the aircraft stealthy instead of just focusing solely on how well it can maneuver. But this does not mean that it is very, it would not be efficient when flying. The fuselage will probably be made with special coatings to hide it from infrared sensors and reduce the heat it gives off working alongside advanced cooling systems in the new fighter. Engineers will also need to ensure that these coatings stay intact, even when the plane is flying at high speeds, without needing lots of maintenance after each flight. The team working on the NGAD program also has to consider how high their new aircraft will fly. For instance, in the case of the Raptor, it flies over 60,000 feet and this requires pilots to wear full pressure suits. Considering the threats that this fighter will face, like space and spectrum warfare, it is clear that the higher an aircraft can fly, the more versatile it becomes. Higher altitudes also improve the fighter's sensors and communication systems, which gives it a strategic advantage over its rivals, especially when navigating dense enemy air defenses. NGAD must stay connected with other aircraft, acting as both a leader and support. Better communication means better survival, and the fighter can cover larger areas without relying on satellites. For instance, an NGAD flying at 60,000 feet could get data from a communications node at 80,000 feet, over 750 miles away. Drones linked together can also exchange data over longer distances without needing satellites or high-flying stations.
While the next generation air dominance increased its scope from a single platform to a family of systems, a crewed fighter aircraft is the centerpiece of the program. It will be supported by a variety of complementing manned, unmanned, optionally manned cyber electronic systems, which are likely to be uncrewed collaborative combat aircraft to carry extra munitions and perform other missions. In particular, this next generation fighter aims to develop a system that addresses the operation needs of the Indo-Pacific Theater of Operations, where current United States Air Force fighters lack sufficient range and payload. The United States Air Force commanders have noted that there may be two variants of NGAD, one with long range and payload for the Indo-Pacific, and one more oriented to the relatively short ranges between possible battle areas in Europe. The fighter is expected to leverage adaptive cycle engines being developed under the Adaptive Engine Transition Program and Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program with flight-ready engines expected by 2025. In June 2022, the United States Air Force was determined that critical technologies were ready to support the program for engineering and manufacturing development. According to Roper, the first full-scale technology demonstrator prototype of the next-generation advanced dominance crewed fighter aircraft from the AEI-X plane program had been flown in 2020, and in 2023, three separate prototypes had flown. The formal solicitation was announced in May 2023, with the goal of source selection in 2024. On July 27, 2023, Kathy Warden, CEO and President of Northrop Grumman, confirmed that the company notified the U.S. Air Force that it would not bid as a prime contractor for the program, leaving Boeing and Lockheed Martin as the probable two remaining contenders for the main manned fighter component of the program. Now to the feature of this next generation fighter, the NGAD will probably have not just the regular missiles like those used by other fighter jets such as the F-22 and F-35, but also new ones like the A-26A Joint Advanced Tactical Missile being made by Lockheed Martin. Additionally, there will be the long-range engagement weapon from Raytheon. Pentagon leaders have been talking about using hypersonic systems as future weapons for over 10 years, so these could become important for the next generation air dominance fighter fleet. And then there are lasers made into weapons. The United States Air Force is already testing lasers that can produce a lot of focus power as part of systems from Lockheed Martin called laser advancements for next generation compact environments. And also the self-protect high energy laser demonstrator made by Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Lockheed. It is not guaranteed that by the early 2030, we'll see fighters shooting laser beams like in Star Wars but they might be used to protect NGADs by stopping enemy missiles, blinding them, and damaging their guidance systems. Obviously, this sixth-generation fighter has several advantages over the previously developed one. Some of these advantages include its open architecture. Open architecture means that the fighter will be designed in a way that allows for easy and quick upgrades. This is important because even though an aircraft may be very advanced, there's always room for improvement. Especially now, as other countries develop similar advanced technology, the NGAD fighter needs to be able to keep up. So by having an open architecture, the fighter can adapt to new challenges on the battlefield by getting upgrades. In simple terms, this means that even after it has been used for some time, the sixth generation fighter can be improved to become a seventh generation fighter. Another added advantage is its maximum connectivity which simply means that the fighter will be able to quickly collect important information about what's happening around it and then use that information. To make this happen, the fighter will have very sensitive sensors installed, which are the best ever used on a fighter. Instead of using traditional radars, the Air Force will use smart skins on the aircraft's surface to collect data. This data will then be shared with other planes in the fleet, whether they're sixth generation like the next generation air dominance fighter or not. This keeps all the friendly planes updated with the latest information in real time. Because of this, the Air Force's fleet becomes a closely connected team in the sky. And this is mostly because of the new fighter's advanced connectivity. Modern fighter engines work best at a specific point during flight. So the sixth generation fighter is getting engines that can change how they work, making them most efficient at any speed and height. This means the fighter can fly further, speed up faster, and use less fuel when flying at slower speeds. 
These engines will work like turbojets when flying really fast and like high bypass turbofan engines when flying slower. General Electric and Pratt and & Whitney are working on this special engine as part of the Adaptive Engine Transition Program for the United States Air Force. The NGAD is not the only technological marvel that is about to stun the world. The United States is also working on its very first hypersonic missile, ALRHW. The long-range hypersonic weapon is a fast missile being made for the U.S. Army. The Navy also wants a version of it for their ships and submarines. The missile has two parts, a big rocket that carries a glide body. When the rocket goes high and fast enough, it lets go of the glide body, which flies super fast towards its target. Dynetics is making the glide body, and Lockheed Martin is making the rocket and putting the missile together. The glide body has been tested and worked well two times, in October 2017 and March 2020. The Army plans to start using the missile in 2023. The Navy wants to have it on their Zumwalt-class destroyers by 2025, and later on their Block 5 Virginia-class submarines by 2028. They initially planned to use it on some other submarines too, but they changed their minds because of money and because those submarines are getting old. In 2018, the Navy was designated to lead the design of the common hypersonic glide body with input from the Army's Rapid Capabilities and Critical Technologies Office. The common hypersonic glide body design comes from an earlier project called the Alternate Reentry System, which was tested in the early 2010s by the Army. That system was based on a prototype called Swerve, made by Sandia National Laboratories in the 1990s. Sandia is working on the design, while Dynetics is making the models for testing. The first test of the Intermediate Range Conventional Prompt Strike Flight Experiment 1 happened on October 30, 2017. A missile that could fit in the launch tube of a submarine flew over 2,000 nautical miles from Hawaii to the Marshall Islands really fast. The common hypersonic glide body was tested in March 2020. LRHW parts were tested during Project Convergence 2022. The United States Army plans to use the long-range hypersonic weapon in a setup with eight missiles. Each battery includes four trucks with trailers, and each trailer carries two missiles in launch containers. There is also a command vehicle with them. They have named the LRHW Dark Eagle. In February 2023, the 5th Battalion 3rd Field Artillery Regiment, which is part of the 1st MDTF's Long Range Fires Battalion, moved the LRHW from Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington to Cape Canaveral, Florida. They plan to have the first set of missiles ready to use by the end of September 2023. On September 7, 2023, a test launch of the Long Range Hypersonic Missile System was called off because something went wrong during the checks before the launch, but they did not say what. Douglas R. Bush said there was a problem with the launcher, but they are working on fixing it and testing it again. The United States has indeed invested more into its defense sector these past few years. With the development of the sixth-generation fighter jet and the hypersonic missiles, the U.S. would always remain at the forefront of technological advancement. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.